Hello there, my name is Cheekster and this is a fun little game called World Box. I first came across it on a mobile phone. Pause yourself, wait a minute. I know it's a phone game, or it was, but on PC it's just fantastic. This is a fantastic god game for PC players. In my opinion, it's one of the best out there and it's, it's like that World of Conflict game but the pixels are just so much nicer and you build little civilizations and you don't really do much with them you let them grow you can interfere with them you can interfere with the progress of others you can you can like in sim city you know where you could have a tornado and monsters you can do that in this so what we're going to do today so what i'm going to show you is i'm going to show you building a world i'm going to show you putting down the civilizations there are there are four we'll go through those and I'll show you some of the effects and I'll show you some disasters and we'll end this with a zombie apocalypse. So bear with me. Okay, so this is the starting starting screen when you come in basically. Basically, this is it. Um, you zoom right out, this is the world. La di da. Anyway, we want a new world. And you can do this by creating your own one along here. Donut, toast, pancake, dormant volcano, cheese. Bad Apple, Chaos Pearl, Chaos Lasagna, Ant Hill, Checkerboard, Cubicles, Empty Ocean. And then you've got your continent, you've got your box world, uh, you've got your islands, and of course you've got your boring planes. But we're not going to do that. Click. Uh, what we're going to do is we're going to do a Steam Workshop map. I love the Steam Workshop. I think that the Steam Workshop is one of the greatest ideas ever for gaming i feel and i feel it's underutilized i think even triple a top top of the line games should have a steam workshop if you're playing liza p you should have a steam workshop where you can create costume people have created costumes and you can play as different characters in the game i know there's plenty of issues with that but i don't care i want to see it i don't even want to hear no i think that should be done so we're going to look at it steam workshop we're going to browse worlds. Uh, so you can go straight into Steam Workshop and you can start fishing and looking for stuff. Um, I really enjoyed Africa. I thought that was fantastic. It's a great continent. It's got lots of diversity with like the, you know, the thick desert stuff at the top and then the jungles and other such things. Warhammer. Of course, I've done a Warhammer world. Europe. Of course, I have uh, played my fever dream of world domination as the British. It's going to happen. And I did it in private. And then you've got UK and Ireland, the British Isles. That was really cool. Uh, you've got the Middle East. Uh, Middle East is a wonderful, diverse area. It's got loads of cool bits. It's also a really great landmass shape to play with. I like that. Earth, fun play here. You know, you've got like planets. You could drop from planets and other stuff. But we're going to pick a key place. Where is he? Uh, Iceberg is the largest size. And that, we've got Azeroth. What am I going to show you? I want to show you something good. Europe with allies. We're going to do an empty world. You can see the population there. And that tells you there how many towns and stuff. Uh, this is quite cool. It's like Europe with, uh, with all the different nations. That's a lot of fun. Um, okay. Let's do Azarofe. Play this world. If you don't know what Azeroth is, um, I will forgive you. It is the world of the world of Warcraft. It is very cool. And here is their their general map. Now, many people have made scanned in maps of, of their favorite worlds. Even the rock eating pancakes is a world you can play on. On Steam Workshop, almost anything's possible. Uh, some people have downloaded uh, images of like or somehow done it where they've created like the best most accurate you can with this pixel game uh, uh like, re uh, like recreations of earth of like china of like the himalayas and australia and stuff like that so here we go where should we start should we start in the duratar situation duratar is rich in gold that's wonderful so here is your basic selection. I'm going to go through this because it is actually really relevant. So first off is the world laws. You need to look at the world laws. 
diplomat this turns off wars this turns off rebellions we're going to do this to start with right you can have border stealing kingdom expansions where they send off settlers and other things like that uh, do they do people need food do they die of old age are are evil monsters or wolves dangerous creatures are they peaceful i did uh this one is natural disasters and this one is other disasters like the undead or aliens or dragons or the creep of flesh or the bio or the robotic invaders or the strange little shop of horrors that occurs there's plenty of things but we'll ignore that for a second that's world laws okay next one you've got world history whatever it just tells you what's happened uh inspect people things about the world uh favorites i've not I've never even clicked on that before people are favorites look at that they must be people i've clicked on and then um ages ages is really cool because ages affects how like the world so like this is what we're in now the age of hope um you might not be familiar with that if you live in the real world um this is the time of great promise where there is a f where the future is bright and full of possibilities and then you've got things like age of sun where the sun blazes down this can affect things create harsh conditions of weather then you've got like dark ages you've got super rainy downpours which will age of the moon you've got the age of chaos which you know like makes everybody stressed and it's just age of wonders then there's the ice age and we're going to turn all these off because it just complicates it too much when i'm just showing you but we'll stick with the age of hope all right so that that's basically the default that's a new thing they added and i think that that was a great thing to add next button this button is world editing so you might look at your time you might say well that's a bit piss poor isn't it so we we at least need a beach you got this here you can edit the terrain let's do it nice and small let's add more beach more beach please more beach there we go and beach can be built on beach can be built on so while we're while we're toying around with that sort of thing let's just quickly jump um to this humans elves orcs and dwarves my only gripe with these with the races in this game my only gripe is that they can't uh capture the cities or the nations or invade them than they can of the same race so only humans can invade and claim a human world like if humans invaded orcs or orcs invaded humans they have to eradicate the entire nation all its buildings and everything i think it'd be really cool if like there was orc buildings that were owned by humans and that human buildings would start popping up around them and then you know it just goes like oh it's like a, a it, oh do you remember orcs used to be here that would be really cool but it doesn't matter we're just going to click on humans right no we're going to click on orcs it's duratar people so orgrimmar's going to start here there they go they're fighting some mongies we'll just start dropping orcs in they've got to fight this huge mongi look at him look at him oh the nightmare right that's that click that off right when they built a they let's see yep they've built a nation here whoa i've clicked on a person there we go I probably spelled this wrong. Or Grimmar. That seems really wrong. It's probably, is there two M's? Doesn't matter. Just look past it. What's that? You say the colour's wrong. Okay, fair enough. Um, ooh, it's got to be red, isn't it? This is another thing. They should have a panel that you can like, quick surf through to find uh, the right colours. I like that red, but is there another red? It's not red red, do you know what I mean? Orgrimmar red is like intense. I'm putting too much thought into this. This is for you, this is not for me. Oh, I've lost my red. Don't worry, I'm neither there. Blue? Oh, there we are. Okay. Orgrimmar. So Orgrimmar is now its place. The first thing they build is like a little campfire place and then uh, they then start to build huts. Uh, to speed things up we're going to set time to five plus. Okay. Um, this world is full of dangers and troubles and trials. There's plenty of savage monsters and the orcs must tame them. If they do, if they do not tame them 
they cannot live. They're building the nation of Orgrimmar. As you can see on a world scale, this world is not the biggest world. Okay? But I just wanted to do a familiar world. So Orgrimmar is building, doing its thing. This is the age of the Orc. I know it's not Tolkien. So there we go. So they're going to build. Now there's lots of little things here. As you can see, minerals. These minerals, these actually come from meteorites. Uh, you've got your swamps here. Uh, is that the Kazan? No, whatever the Goblin Isles is. You've got Pandaria, da -ba -da -ba -da, all this. Now one of the issues is, is when you settle on, on some islands, you can't just like put them on a small island. The island has to be large enough to build, which I don't like. Oh, a nation fell there. Uh, a city fell there. These wild beasts are wiping them out. There you go. There's the main base. Fire is spreading. There is an evil. Kel Faras. Uh, the elves return. And. Gee, come on, Kel. Don't burn everything. Don't worry. The humans of Stormwind. Uh, Stormwind's there, isn't it? Just put loads of humans down. Okay. Whoop. Uh, and, uh, yeah, Ooh, yeah, there we go. Stormwind, okay. So, humans of Stormwind are building, it's all good. There's monsters, it's, it's what it is, right? What they will do is they will then start to build little tents, as you can see. How are the orcs faring? Uh, the orcs are nearly dead. Well, I guess Kelfaras was just too much to handle. Okay, well, if they're going to do that, we're going to put the elves up there. And that's cool. Okay, so they, there we go. So they're, they're building this snafu and they're, try, they're trying to build like little nations, that sort of thing. Options. So that's your four races. These are the four races you can build civilizations with. Oh, they're all dead. Do you know what? We're going to change this map because it's full of dangers. Uh, we're going to do... Uh, what should we do? Should we do a continent? Or should we do Should we do toast? No, we're going to do a box world. So here you go. Basic map. Iceberg. You can change the noise, the random shapes, and other such things like that. Doesn't matter. Create. Wait for it. Yeah, so, you, you know, you've got all these different um, biomes as well, which we're going to look at. Uh, let's build dwarves. Uh, these dwarves are living close to the mountains. The Great Awuwu. Right, the Great Wuwus, these guys, the dwarves, they're going to start building. Now, dwarves are interesting. Uh, like, they build slightly different from the others. They build roads. It's quite rigid structures. Everything's kind of uniform, in, well, moderately so, as, as uniform as this game can go. You can then also place down different animals. You've got rhinos, uh, buffaloes, dogs, crabs, uh, rat king, if you if you must. Cats, if you have a, a cat girl problem. It's, it's all there. Penguins, crocodiles, frogs. Uh, but then it gets more interesting over here, if you scroll along. You can place down the cold ones. These are like ancient Arctic nut jobs, and they have the ice tower. Then you have the flame tower, and then you have these core knight demons, these hellish creatures that are red hot. These guys are pretty tough. A single one of these demons can march into your settlement and start causing very significant trouble. Um, oh, yeah, we are five. Like, it spreads fire as it walks, sets fire to trees, causes a lot of issues. You've got bandits you can put in. Evil mages are an issue. They, If they're put in, they can cause a lot of trouble. Then you've got necromancers. Necromancers, of course, they resurrect the dead, uh, create the, uh, they raise the, yeah, they raise the dead. Then you've got plague doctors, which I think um, counter the undead uh, somewhat. I know that the druids do, and the druids can uh, fire projectiles, as can white mages. They're, obviously, they fight them. You've got um, the snowmans. Uh, I've not really used the snowmans, but there they are. You can have zombies. You can have skeletons. Biomass. Now this, this is really interesting, right? Because, right, we're gonna we're gonna build. I'll tell you what, we're gonna build an island. Uh, let's start with plain soil. Okay. 
there we go and then we're going to have some forestry in the middle that's nice sand starts to automatically do it because you can set a, a setting where it starts building sand around the edges we'll have a, a little bit of a mountainous bit there and then then we'll come over here Whoop. over here this is your biome oh let's let's build this up a bit i like this brush a lot so standard grass mushroom corrupted fire no corruption seeds i don't like corruption seeds very much because they mess everything up fire candy and Da, 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 da. Yeah, we were on candy. Then we've got ice crystals. Uh, not ice crystals. They're kind of like uh, what are these crystal seeds? It's just all crystal crystal biome. Then we have got permafrost, which is all snow. Uh, savanna. Ah. Natural biomes clashing there. Uh, then you've got this one, which I really like, which is the like, kind of like elf lands, like super fertile. You've got jungle. You've got to have jungle. It's not completely that jungle. You've got arcane desert. Glassy desert. And then you've got lemon seeds. So it's the land of lemons and lemon people. Uh, then you've got this, which is the marshlands. Now one thing you could do, then you can um, populate that with all the grass necessary. And all the bits and bobs. And then you could do the trees. Of them. What's that? You say the, the candy isn't right. The candy isn't right. Don't worry, candy will return. And then, um, there we go, candy. So these are like all these different biomes. They're quite beautiful, uh, there's a lot of variety. I like the candy, but they also come with their own like challenges. Uh, there's, there are different like monsters, like crystal monsters and other such things. I think that's really cool. Um, this undead one really bothers me. It creeps and it invades other ones. It's quite an aggressive uh, biome. Then here, this is your grass, grass, your trees, um, berries for munching. These are your different materials. You can add these things like a volcano uh, if you simply must. And then the volcano will then produce its love affair with fire. And then you can put water ones as well, which can like, counterbalance the darkness of fire. You've got different, like, different clouds which affect, affect the characters, affect the people in the game. And that's quite cool. Uh, back to the creatures. I really want to just talk about the creatures for a second Because uh, these these four creatures are not creatures. They're like biomes in their own right, but uh, inhospitable biomes so This is the robot, okay, are you ready? The robot so this is the hive mind robot it starts placing down like tracks and spreading out slowly and it, it produces its own little terminator robots which shoot things nearby and then it will then grow and then you know you can place more down and then it will start to as you can see and then it starts to spread out this mechanical biome all right so this is your ai one this is your biomass one which i quite like look at that and then it creates this uh and you, you can have these biomes fight each other like plants versus machines if you if you want that's really cool a uh, very creepy one is the tumor and so let's put tumor here this is a flesh mound thing it's whoa. then you've got super pumpkin which may be the last line of defense against such inhospitable tumors and there you go so these create these biomes they stick just to land they don't they don't push out and they, they do kind of propagate and push themselves out, but uh, they kill everything uh, virtually as they spread. Um, it looks like nature didn't win. Uh, not today. Uh, you've got fairies. You can put these fairies down. Fairies will fly around. They seem to cause lightning. You can't, you can't be everything. Uh, Godfinger. I don't like this one because it seems to start like a fake additional player which starts messing up your world dragons i will show you those in the end as well as ufos as well as zombies i will show you that you will be really interested in zombies and you got it beehive la di da you got all these different insects and, and then different types of bugs that create specific land types messes up the landscape look it's like june okay 
So it just flies around, uh, or worms around, and destroys the lad. So that's really cool. All right, so what chaos is happening over there? And my, my lad here, this was the nation that we planted while that was going on. Let's zoom in. Dwarves. So this is your main hold. This is the town center, effectively. These are little houses, or it could be considered a house, could be considered like a village or a town. They do kind of like get bigger and better, like they could become they become more stone-like. You can like egg them on as well to be more stonish, stone heavy, if you will. There we go. And then you give them materials, and then they'll be like, "Oh, thanks, man." And then they'll start building stuff for you, you know, or for themselves. But yeah, we don't have to be bitter about that. So that's it. You get like little windmills. They'll also start to build um, uh, like docks, and then ships will start to uh, begin sailing around the world. Uh, the doors here have no idea of what I've built up here. I didn't realize the worm could go through the sea. I don't know where the worm is right now. There could be trouble. Uh, you do clouds, different kinds of weather. That's really cool. Uh, as you can see, the different biomes. Look at this beautiful stuff. Look at that there. You see savanna, a bit of jungle, a bit of, a bit of desert, arcane desert, sand, uh, like sandy places, the mountainous regions, which can affect borders, by the way. Be careful with those. Um, all very fun. Um, look, they've started building a dock, and this dock gets bigger, and then they can start having bigger ships where they can actually start sending their armies to other continents or islands, and they can start sending these things to go and conquer other things. You can set this up as well to initiate uh, a rivalry, uh, like um, with other, other nations, you've got multiple options. And this brings us to the vital tab here of kingdoms. Here, spite, you can make everybody hate a kingdom, you can make peace. Here you can whisper and get a nation to initiate a nation to start war with another one. That's a part of the whole god thing. You can in inspire a revolt. I right, click there and go, oops, he didn't like it. Right? And then um and that's that way. And then as you can see, they're now sending armies. This hexing over the top, these lines over the top. They retook the territory they lost. And so that's kind of like a glimpse into the war. We will be doing a global event, a global um, zombie uh, epidemic um, after this on a different map. I just want to show you all these really cool things. So you can see the culture layer. The primary culture is there and it will be named there. Uh, you can also flick here. I think this is alliances, is it? Yep, I rarely use that. The kingdom layer. Now the kingdom layer shows the whole kingdom as a whole. And then the village layer shows the whole kingdom broken up into villages. So this is how many actual settlements there are or states within this empire. And then that's your clan layer. So there's different clans. So these guys are a different clan from these guys for some reason. And it shows the clan's influences. But I don't really know where that goes. I haven't really tried much about that. You can also hide boats, show boats, same with uh, battles and army targets, lines. You can also, sh these are leaders. Uh, the gold is the king, and then you've got all the princes. All these would be the leaders of each of the little states, which is very nice. And uh, important events, it tells you map names, la di da, tool tips, stuff that's not super interesting, but you know, it's there. Um, okay, so here you can initiate a force. You can start an earthquake if you simply must. Um, you can lower the temperature or raise it in one area which can make the area inhospitable. You can cause fires, you can rain lava down, you can start a tornado if you're feeling particularly frisky. It's, there's lots of options there. This tornado can be a serious issue, uh, as you imagine this tearing through a civilization. And you can, like I was saying, you can start a lava rain. Look at that, you know, that that's annoying. Um, and then we've got destruction powers. Yeah, so, I'm going to save one of these destruction powers, two of these, to the, to, to the end. But you can drop bombs. Grenades. Let's start with grenades. How do you defeat robots? You drop grenades on them. See? Breaks that down, and that's all cool. There's napalm. That is an option. There is an antimatter bomb that annihilates all pixels. And then there are standard bombs. And they can just bomb everything. 
As you can tell, this game can run on a potato, and that is rather cool. We have the atomic bombs, and we'll show that in a bit. Uh, we have the bowling ball of doom. There we go. Uh, then we have heat ray. This is orbital bombardment at its best. Uh, if you get really bored and you, or you forget, you might accidentally get to the Earth core. And then, of course, you have meteorite. Bam. Meteorite's really interesting because it drops this special ore, which is valuable. So, like these orcs, for example, uh, orcs, uh, dwarves, would love a meteorite. They'd be like, oh, wow. What's that? Drop it on, on a town. Guys. Um, so, yeah, that's really cool. Robot Santa. Oh, I've never pressed that button. Let's see what that does. Robot Santa is throwing bombs wherever he goes. It's, it, it's love in a way. Infinity Coin. This removes half the life. It's, you know, end game, isn't it? Grey Goo basically is it like a virus that spreads across the world and obliterates it. Uh, we'll show that at the end. And then we've got crabs, which we'll get to. Uh, we have various other powers. Um, this is Divine Light. You can heal. This is all very interesting. Magnet, never really used that. I'm not sure what it does. I mean, you just pick things up and then put them back down. Uh, Rain Blood restores health to creatures in a horrific manner. Well, if they're vampires. Uh, madness, you can induce madness. You can curse. Zombie infection, we'll be getting to in the next map. Uh, the next and final map. Uh, blessing. Uh, the plague can bre break out. Now, the plague is fun. People die, but they don't turn into zombies. Uh, mushroom spores, uh, coffee, you know, you can motivate them to work harder. Like, come on, guys, like, seriously, you know, you, you're paid enough. Uh, it's that kind of thing. Uh, then you've got, like, uh, gamma rays. I'm not even entirely sure what these do. Pick some bad traits and make them rain. You can drop a monolith. I've never understood what the monolith is for, but I imagine it has a purpose. Uh, the golden brain attracts creatures that like to eat brains and nothing can stop them. It's quite a good way to control zombies, I imagine. Then you have the corrupted brain that makes creatures uh, plunge into madness. Uh, the dwarves will attack it. That's on site. There you go. Uh, it's quite a dangerous thing to have, I imagine. And then um, I've never used these. Conway Game Life, cellular automation, or simple rules that brings destruction and fun. Should we see what it does? I don't know what that means. Um, and then these, the printers. This is now Skull Island, <laughs> if you if you will. I feel like it's larger than I expected. Uh, you can drop a star down. It just make shapes. Like I'm not quite sure why you want that, but some people do. Oh, you see, look, this is a different time. It's gone dark because it's the different age, it's like an age of darkness. When that happens, lights come on. And that's quite cool. See, Candyland, that's grown out of control. These dwarves had to get as much of it as they could. But look at that. That's quite beautiful, isn't it? It's like a town. Uh, they do get more pretty. You can have, tu there are turrets that get built, like t defensive structures. There is fortifications of sorts where like there's barracks, I think, I think they would be. There's a mine. It's all very simple. And other such stuff like that Babaroo. And that's still going. So that's that. Uh, and I think that that's really interesting. Now, what we're going to do next is we are going to load a world. I did make one a while ago. I've made some very stupid maps. Back to see Europe. As you can see, I do love building in on the planet. North America by Jester. Let's have a look at that, shall we? Load world. Yep, load. Be prepared. This is it. We're going to unleash some quite madness. Um, this is not North America, dude. I've got a better North America than this. Of sorts. Not quite. Okay. I want one with loads of people. That looks like a really bad America that I've drawn. With probably every 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 state in the wrong place. Load. 
forgiveness is one of the keys to being a human being. This map may not make sense. Okay, it doesn't really make sense, but it doesn't matter because we're just going to be playing around with the concept of destruction. Okay? So this is like a heavily built up human zone, as you can see. Uh, remember I was talking to you about the different structures. There's like a fort and other things like that. They're not all very well developed. They're not all max stone buildings, but that doesn't really matter right now. Okay. So what we're going to do We'll, we'll bring out the weapons when things get out of hand and we're trying to control things. Okay. We will spread destruction at roughly this size. Let's do it in this... These are very random. Uh, I haven't really done the names fully yet, have I? Um, let's do California. So we're just slowly poisoning the folks of California. Okay. Okay. That's that. So if we zoom up, the zombie apocalypse has begun in California. You see all these crazy cats? That's a zombie. And they're confused. They don't know who they are or what they are, but they're moving fast. Now, the first thing you start seeing is fires breaking out. As the conflicts begin, the state itself uh, falls into into a state of war. Of course, the fighting forces, if they have not been turned into zombies, which they probably have been, will engage in, engage the best they can. Leaders and other commanding units will attempt to defend the town. The number here is the population. This is falling, and they will eventually succumb to the zombie horde. What happens then is all the buildings simply become defunct they're like they're gone it's like they don't break or anything they're just grayed out this nation will fail to contain the zombie apocalypse uh, other states will uh, see here from the, like a mexico state area the chihuahua i can't freaking remember what was stationed there these guys these guys will send forces and then here this like texas like group will then try to send forces here to counter the zombie effect as they're all humans, they're all sort of semi light side, so they will attempt to fight the zombies. Trouble is, the zombies will do not respect borders. The borders will fail, as you can see, as they spread through. Isn't that crazy? Isn't that crazy? Now, if you add necromancers into places, they will kill people and then bring them back to life. This can be like a snowball effect and then cause a lot of problems. <clears throat> and there you are, the California state has entirely collapsed. The green dots are zombies, as you can see. Uh, you can play play this with um, Village Layer, so you can have that, or which I've named all things in the wrong way. That's not to worry. States are still engaging in war, even though there is a disaster occurring. And this will then begin to cross over to different boards different states and then you spread the zombie apocalypse now it wouldn't be america if it didn't have some exciting stuff so on this badly spelt what oh, geez i know i made this late at night but come on man in hawaii which doesn't look like hawaii a dragon arrives and it causes problems so that's that and then over here we'll have a dragon appear in Alaska these guys they won't have to suffer the the dragon for long because the dragon will literally just fly around and cause problems but again as the zombie apocalypse destroys the west coast the east coast is met with a surprising influx of UFOs and they're not all American made and as they fly through they begin engaging in laser warfare it's brutal it's wild it's insane uh, Chicago um what's that there uh yeah so that's that
And this is the sort of thing. And this is what I was saying about it. It was like The Sims, isn't it? Uh, oh, you can have a lot of units on here, of course. They're all pixel. The UFOs will engage pretty intensely. Uh, to fight the UFOs, archers will, uh, or ground forces that are capable of ranged, uh, like ranged attacks, will engage uh, the flying UFOs. However, when the UFOs crash, an alien gets out, and the alien tends to have a laser gun, which makes him very tough look at him go right and he can cause a lot of mayhem as he runs across the american countryside uh, not all the ufos will survive long enough um, but sometimes they can have some like just even their own troops that have landed can be armed with laser guns that cause a lot of problems now these some of these humans or whatever race that you pick they will be able to kill these aliens other things and then they will be able to acquire those laser guns which does make a nation particularly overpowered as you can see many ufos are being down the united states is shook but not shaken beyond belief however they've only just realized that the zombie apocalypse was occurring on the other side doing their duty they've decided to engage in nuclear warfare so as you see all these guys here in this open space, that's a safer spot. Drop in a nuke, boom. Now it's effective, but it does have its consequences. You will start getting like radioactive creatures and other such things like that. And then there is the star bomb. This is a nuke that's too big for its boots. As you can see, that just obliterated a lot of zombies in one go. Could probably see i think either an alien or an american has a laser gun uh the difference probably just slang um there we go that's that other options is the crab bomb crab bomb is a flame weapon drops a crab they blo they jump out into lots of little bits like that it's, it's quite fun i quite like that i remember i said laser beam laser beam can burn these things down so if you create a zombie apocalypse, sometimes it's fun to see, can you manage a zombie apocalypse? Can you bring it back from the brink? Or do you have to drop an antimatter bomb on California to wipe out something? All right, so that's that. Maybe we'll do some grenades. All right. Remember, you can ramp up the destruction. You don't have to be tame. You don't have to be tame at all. And that, as you can see, that's pretty intense. But it does get more intense. And that comes with this button. This button, do not be deceived, they put a halo above the crab. Now what concerns me about that is, is the crab good or is it just doing God's work? And is God a good guy in the end of the day? We don't know. But when we click on it, we become the crab. Hello. How are you? Uh, no. I do not speak Spanish. Anger is the first sign of crab dementia. There we go. And it is pretty wild. So, let's go for a walk. I would like more monsters, but crab is acceptable. So, Disco Crab, he's just, he can't take it. The USS Enterprise has just been blown up. And look at that. Disco Inferno. And the crab has caused a lot of problems. But the crab has taken pity, even though the Americans are using alien. <laughs> the Americans are having a bad day, aren't they? Um, look at that, look. Human warrior using a laser gun, trying to counter the crab power. I'm out of range. Uh, no. He, he. Is he dead? He's dead. You're saying, can the crab go into the water? Well, yes, it can. It's traveling over to Mexico. Mexico is kind of zombied. Now, as you can see, zombies do not pose a threat to crab. Crab does not care. But crab is merciful. And so crab creates an insane an incineration circle of disco to 
to incinerate the zombies of Mexico. There we go. Look at that. Look at that. And then Crab feeling content with how helpful he's been leaves in an atomic explosion. So that's really cool. And the last last buttons, you can halve the half the world's population. I don't find that very interesting. But I do find this button interesting. It started with a raindrop. Nanobots. The ultimate destroyer of worlds. This these things will they will just eat all material and uh, matter and they will just work their way outwards and they will wipe out an entire civilization a world N yes nay a world and even leave a zombie behind i mean come on now it's like get it together and so my crappy united states map that i made uh oh, quite a while ago stands no chance like, as you can see, look, it just eats through uh, people, zombies, buildings. Some people survive to build again in a world that is simply grey. That said, the ocean floods through. But don't worry, people can swim. And the boats are still there. And there are bowling balls. So there we go. That is World Box. World Box is really fun. It's you can create crazy maps. Like I don't really destroy worlds when I play it. I I effectively really enjoy um, building up civilizations, initiating like like you know some kind of war. Sometimes that's fun. But whoops, it's actually that's a good point. It's it's just a bit, you know, it's a bit of fun. You have a mark about happiness. Yeah, go on then. Load world. Load. It's, you can, it's like you put it on, you build, you build the little civilization, you can push them on or you can see where they go. I built NATO. Look at me. Who's invaded the world? What's going on? Um, or just the Western world. And some bizarre alien landscape down here. Um, but yeah, you know, and then you, you build these little worlds and you, you know, you, you can really enjoy. Whoops. How do you turn these off? There we go. You know, you, you know, like you can really enjoy the little buildings. They have little sculptures. There's boats and ships and stuff like that. And it's just pleasant. It's just pleasant. You can build such a wonderful thing. And that's what I like about this game is there is, you can just build for hours. You can build for hours. You can just spread your forces out and then see what happens like the ships yeah it's just great little people it's it's a god game they 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 just build civilizations on any map surface you make you can choose to destroy them you can choose um to support them uh you can play out any god mode you want this is in my opinion one of if not the best god games on steam it's just really good it's just really really good like it doesn't i know i know it's pixel and i know it doesn't look like it's the greatest thing that's ever existed but what was that china jeez i was trying to build something crazy here wasn't i oh is that egypt not spain oh that's spain um yeah it's pretty wonderful Yeah, so there you go. Uh, World Box is a cheap game. Now, you can get it on your phone, uh, but you uh, and I think I think you still have to buy. I think it might be free on the phone, uh, Android, iOS, and then like you pay for like the upgrades, like extra civilizations and stuff. But you can just build it on there. I love it on PC. It has a uh, Steam Workshop, of course. The Steam Workshop, big plus, big big plus. And I don't think you can 
I, mean, I don't think you can fault it. The only issue with the Steam Workshop actually is they don't have uh, the mods. People have made mods for this game that have tanks, uh, futuristic stuff, and all sorts of different types of map styles, building styles, things with cogs and stuff like that, which I have never ne never played, and I would really enjoy having that on there. You know? Um, create a new world. And yeah, if you had like... Um, yeah, if you had like like a, um, a modding community where you could build units, like little pixel units that people could do Warhammer or Star Wars or like, you know, anything, anything they can think of. Steampunk, you know, cyberpunk, that kind of thing. Create little like neon cities. Like, that would be wonderful. And I think that is what uh, the workshop is missing. I did see that people are trying to put mods on there and that mods could be coming. So that could be a thing in the future. But this game is red hot if you're a god gamer and you just want to god world gamer that is not a god of gaming uh, and you just want to play something that's like low maintenance brain wise you don't have to think uh too much you, but you could you could uh put some strategy in it but there is no strategy this is literally a sandbox game it's completely up to you how it goes uh you don't you you don't have to lose in any way this is a comfy game for a comfy evening for a comfy dude or dudette that just wants to create civilizations and potentially wipe them out when they've done there you go so my name is cheekster this is world box i hope you enjoyed this episode and my uh my ranting on about how cool it is and until the next time bye bye <laughs>